Thanks for tuning in to the Mariners Virtual Baseball Bash. Now enjoy this virtual clubhouse chat. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to another virtual clubhouse chat. I am Mariners broadcaster Aaron Goldsmith. Very excited today to be joined by Mariners pitcher, pitcher Kendall Graveman all the way from his home in Birmingham, Alabama. Kendall, good to see you, man. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me. It's, we're great here in Birmingham and had some, some storms roll through last night, but we survived them. And man, it's an honor to be on and talking to you today. Well, we'll see if you uh, still feel like it's an honor in a few minutes. <laughs> this one, this virtual clubhouse chat, everybody's going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to talk to Kendall for a little bit. We're going to have time at the end of the program, really more like the back half of the program to take your questions. I'll be sure to, to scroll down, use that chat function, the Q&A function, and fire away, hammer on your keyboard, and let us know what questions you have for Kendall. We're going to pick somebody at the end of the chat today, by the way, they'll be taking home a Kendall Graveman autographed baseball. So we want to hear your questions for Kendall. Uh, but we're going to play a little game in a short while called Take It to the Grave. Pretty intense sounding. And uh, we are going to possibly uh, Go-Gurt style some condiment packets um, if <laughs> we don't want to answer questions. So let's see what we got. We'll, we'll, you know what? We'll get into the condiment packets in a little bit. Uh, let's, let's kind of ease into this a, a little bit first. Uh, but uh, Kendall, we've been having a blast getting to know guys and catch up with guys as we're now in week two of the Mariners baseball bash, mariners.com slash baseball bash for the complete schedule. We got more events coming up today. And in fact, week two, the one we're in right now, the final week, we'll even push into Saturday. So we got a bonus day of the bash for everybody around the country uh, tuning in, watching today on on YouTube, on Facebook, Twitter, all of our social media platforms. We hope you can subscribe and, and catch up with everything. Uh, but Kendall, first of all, man, we want to know what your offseason's been like. We, we're so thrilled that you're going to be part of the Mariners again in 2021. We just barely got a chance to see a pitch last year, but you're you're healthier. You're able to be back on the mound, and you'll be in Scott's bullpen this year. Yeah, I'm super excited about being in the bullpen, and all season's going great. I mean, to come in all season a few days and and know that the contract wasn't getting picked up but also be talking in advance hey let's let's resign and i just have such a good feeling in my gut and my heart that this is where myself and my family needs to be seattle's been such a good organization and even speaking on what you guys are doing the past two weeks or last week and this week for the fans it's man it's top notch and thank you guys for doing that i know the fans really appreciate it and hopefully we're getting a lot of good feedback from it, but um, it's just a place that the, from the front office to um, the clubhouse staff, to the players and the environment and the culture that we're creating, it's somewhere I wanted to be. And we have really good things on, on the horizon. And I've never felt as good about a situation as I do about this year. Um, just talking and getting to know the guys. It takes about a year or so to build relationships and, to go somewhere else after these relationships have been built is, is something that I found really tough. So to be able to re-sign back for less guarantee, um, but then negotiating with Jerry and they've been awesome um, to even maximize my potential if I pitch well this year and stay healthy, um, something they were willing to do and something I was willing to agree to and just being back in that bullpen. I, if our bullpen is good and I believe that it will be, um, that we'll have a chance to win a lot of games this year. And it's going to depend a lot on the bullpen. And I don't say that that's the elephant in the room. Um, last year, it was a, a situation where we didn't pitch well out of the bullpen. Uh, starting rotation did a great job. I think if we hit a little bit better and we, we played great defense, um, but I've got to take control. And along with some guys that we've signed of the bullpen, um, then we're going to be just fine. I think we'll win a lot of games this year. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit more in depth about the bullpen because you're going to be a major factor specifically in the back end of that pen. But first, I'm curious from you know, people lose sight all the time, and it's easy to for any fan of any sport to lose sight of the fact that you guys are real human beings. You're a father. You've got an almost two year old daughter. You've got a wife. You're a real dude. You're not just a ball player who steps out on the field at seven o'clock every night. Uh, when you came to the organization and you were familiar with it from afar during your time with Oakland, but when you stepped foot inside the clubhouse for the first time in Peoria for spring training, who were some of the guys that you immediately gravitated to that, that you became really close with that made you in part want to come back to the Mariners? 
Yeah, immediately. Um, I text Marco a little bit before I even showed up to spring training and, and, uh, and reached out and, Hey, I've been watching from afar, excited to be on the team with you. Uh, let's go to work. I'd heard some really good things about him. Didn't know him personally. So kind of gravitated towards him and even threw a little bit as we got there. You know, you always build that relationship with a throwing partner and, um, you can tell a lot about somebody's personality by the way they, they play catch. <laughs> and it's, um, it's a unique thing for me to, to be able to gravitate towards him uh, being another starter and going to battle. One thing he did say was, Hey, we got to take care of our stuff individually first before we can help the guys around us. And I thought that was um, very important for me because I'm somebody that always wants to help. And sometimes I can lose sight of even my own stuff on certain times. Um, not always, but he, he just kept reiterating that to me that we got to be the best we can. And then we're able to overflow and help other guys. So he was one, and then facing Seeger and him being in the AL West and myself being in AL West for such a long time, it's um, somebody that I respect, somebody that I trust. Um, and just from watching him and knowing him, um, talking to different players that had played with him and knowing him, I just knew what kind of person he was. Uh, so we started to build a relationship there. And I know it's sometimes harder to build that pitcher positional player relationship but to break down that barrier sometimes is something we have to do. Uh, but that's another one, obviously. And then, man, to be honest, to build relationships with everyone, um, to get to know people. I encourage the younger guys all the time, know the guy that's washing your clothes, know the clubby's name, know the person that's cooking your food so you can say thank you and call them by their name. Um, know, I mean, this year you guys weren't being, or around, but know the people, the PR department, know everyone's name. And when you build those relationships, you start to feel a unity. You start to feel a closeness because honestly, with our lifestyle and the amount of games that we play, you can go three months and you see the same face, but you don't know their name. And it's um, it, it's honest. It happens. And it's not something that we do on purpose, but it takes a little effort to get to know someone. And I think for me, outside of those two guys, the whole organization was new. So I was trying to get to know everyone. Yeah, we had you on, Mike and I had you on for an in-game interview on a root telecast. And when we went to break, and it was our first time really talking to you. And of course we were separated from you and everybody else all season, but when we went to break and Mike and I take the headsets off and we're like, that's a real dude, man. Like that's a real guy. He's not just a ball player. This is, he gets it. He gets the bigger picture and, and you explain it perfectly there. By the way, you mentioned Marco. You and I are going to have a chance to hang out with Marco on Friday at 4 o'clock. Inside Corner is back. we got a matinee version, Inside Corner Live with Kendall Graveman. So looking forward to getting the microphone in front of Marco once again and having Kendall uh, tag team on that one with us. You, you said something, Kendall, that I've never heard somebody say before, and I'm curious what you mean. You said you can tell a lot by a guy by the way they play catch. So now I'm like self-conscious anytime I go play catch with somebody now. Tell me what you mean by that. I mean, I play catch with Gerber uh, when I got moved to the bullpen. And I'm seven throws in, and Gerber's 150 feet away. And I'm like, man, I'm almost 30 at that time. I am 30 now, but I'm like, I don't know if I can keep up. He's a young <laughs> arm. And, and then you play catch with Marco, and it's nice and easy and controlled. None of them are wrong, and none of them are completely right. But Marco's nice and easy and hitting you in the chest, and – we could play catch for 20 minutes and we're back to 120 feet and it's a lot of intent and Gerber is what you get on the mound. So, I mean, it's just personality wise, you can tell um, a lot about a guy just, just kind of going out and playing catch with him. I played catch with Sheffield a lot. I knew the aggression that he was going to have on the mound just by the way he played catch. And we were working on that sinker a lot during spring training last year. He was my catch partner every day and just getting, um, immediate feedback, given immediate feedback with somebody like myself being a sinker ball guy. You know, obviously he's left-handed. Um, but then you play catch with Dunn and there's a lot of um, technique and, and focusing on the body and how it moves. And you can just see the wheels turning every time he makes a throw. He is really focused on where his front leg is, where his front side is, where his backside is. And I think it's um, something you can just really see uh, it's how somebody's brain works when you're playing catch. That's fascinating. That's a great breakdown. You gave us the full scouting report on a, on a handful right. of guys there. I like it. 
Hey, before we get to a take to the grave, I do want to talk about you going from a role that you had been in. I mean, essentially your whole professional career as a starting pitcher to now, at least for the short term ahead, a relief pitcher. When, when you made that transition last year, Kendall, I mean, it, I realized that the first time there was probably an extra dose of adrenaline, given the fact that it was your first time. But man, even once you settled into the bullpen, you were still just blowing cheese, man. I mean, that sinker, you're flirting with triple digits more times than not. It was nasty. And maybe most importantly, it was a role that your your public comments about moving to the bullpen was immediate buy-in. Like, absolutely. I want to be here. And I'm not pitching the fifth inning, man. <laughs> you said in so many words, I'm pitching in the back end when it counts the most and the highest leverage. The confidence that we heard when you talked about it and the conviction you had in the new role was was really awesome. I'm, I'm curious what made it click that quickly for you. When you have a fear of your career being over, it's um, you'll do anything. And man, uh, I'm just blessed. Honestly, I, it almost brings tears to my eyes that I have this opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm super blessed to be able to pitch. And uh, I battled for about two and a half years. And I think we talked about that a little bit. But going into that, man, had surgery in May of 2018. And then you find out that you have a benign bone tumor in your cervical spine. And the pain and the doubt that in my mind, I knew I may not pitch again. And then to find a situation where I feel good and I'm uh, the passion of the game comes back. I don't know if you've ever done anything where you hurt constantly, but um, that's what I did for a while. And it was, it wasn't too fun. And I just, I say that to be honest and transparent and real. And it's, um, that's where it stems from. And for me, when I found that, new role and that passion i was so excited to get back in the game and pitch that whenever you wanted to pitch me i was gonna pitch but i knew i had the stuff to pitch in the back end of the game and those guys were working so hard at the front end of the game to get us a lead i wore a lot of that on my shoulder to hey let's finish a ball game and when it's time to finish a ball game it's time to go get a win and now you're not always going to be perfect um i understand that but there's a mentality that, hey, my guys, the guys that are my brothers sitting in that dugout at work to get us a lead, let's keep it. And for me, that adds a little extra fuel. Um, it actually it wears on me a little bit, too, when I blow it. Uh, I remember that game in San Francisco very vividly that I gave up three runs and, you know, they hit a chopper over over my head for a single. And, and then I end up giving up a double and we gave up three runs. And it was a tough feeling, man. It was a tough loss. And I'll wear those, but I have to learn to, in the bullpen, to turn it over quicker. So uh, for me, when Scott said, hey, I'm so thankful, too. I got to thank huh, – I was about to go on the 45-day DL and be done, going into this offseason, not pitching. And I called training staff, said, hey, what if I can pitch out of the bullpen? And they called Jerry, and Jerry was gracious enough to allow me to do it. And they said, hey, go to Tacoma to the taxi squad, and I just believe – by the grace of God, man, I'm in I'm in the bullpen and and still playing baseball. So I got a lot to offer this year. I'm healthy. I've never felt as good as I have up to this moment. And man, I'm just so thankful to be in a position to help a team win. And hopefully can be a, a mentor and a leader off the field as much as I am on the field. Uh, I think that goes such a long way. That goes more importantly to who I am and my purpose inside of this game than than anything I can do to help someone lower their ERA or create a better pitch or or any of that. So hopefully that rubs off also. Man, Kendall, that, that brings tears to our eyes as well, man. I mean, it's 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 more than just seven o'clock every night is the point. Yeah. And I think that that story of your journey to get to where you are today and the role that you will be having in this coming season, that that sums it all up. Hey, one of my favorite Kendall Graven moments uh, from last year was uh, something from the podium that I know you have uh, brought in, in honor of Take It to the Grave. Let's see. Let's, let's see, see the hardware, Kendall. Got. Let's see what we got here, man. Let's show it off a little bit. We'll put it on for the game. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, us, tell us about the chain. Where did this come from? Remind us. Man, so I'm going through all this. And uh, Sheffield has one that's a little bit smaller and maybe a, a little bit 
more real. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I always used to give him a hard time, like, hey, how much you spend on that chain? And he would always give me a number and, you know, I would just mess with him. And so he had this song they love listening to, and these are called Cuban Links. And he would always say, I'm going to die in my Cuban Links. And I would give him a hard time. So when I came back, the the starters at the time, Taiwan was still there. The guys were in and uh, they told me how to straighten these things out, but I still ain't figured it out. And and Ty was there and Marco and and Dunn, they had the idea to buy this for me. So they bought it for me and and here we are. <laughs> uh, when I got back to pitch out of the bullpen. So this thing is is fairly heavy and they wanted me to pitch it and I'm like, there's no way I can pitch it. <laughs> No chance. Like I'll wear it after the game, but I won't be able to pitch in this. So that's kind of where it came from. Just a, a welcome back. Hey, we're glad you're back. We've missed you. A uh, little present for me. Does your wife like it? That's the most important thing. My daughter likes it. She, she'll she put it on sometimes. <laughs> She's walking around barely. But um, yeah, I, I'd use the wear it. I pull it out of the weight room sometimes here in Birmingham. And uh, we had some new guys come in the other day and I put it on and they were like, man, is that real? And I never tell them it's not real, but <laughs> I <ride> it out. <laughs> well, it looks fantastic. Thank you. Uh, the Cuban links uh, fit you well, might I add. All right. So we're going to get to take it to the grave. We each have three questions for one another. We do not know what these questions are. This is very intense, like your chain. Now, <laughs> we also have uh, a five pack of condiment packets, right? So we have... I mean, we have the atomic Tabasco. Okay, we, we have. have just a classic ballpark yellow mustard. You got the relish. I got the relish too. Uh, easy goes down easy. Ketchup, and then what I think is probably the most controversial for most people. We got a full pack of mayo. I mean, no, this, can, this can take you down. So <laughs> uh, we're going to ask each other questions. If you answer the question, hey man, you're safe from the condiments. If you're like. <laughs> I do not want to answer that and have people know, then you got to like Gogurt style <laughs> one of these. All right. So um, I will ask you the first question and then we will alternate. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Take it to the grave. Here we go. All right. Kendall, which meal does your wife make that you like the least? You can answer this. If you don't, I'm going to start you off easy because of that chain. You got to, you got to crush the ketchup. Man, I'll answer it because she knows when I'm eating cereal at 830. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> but she makes spaghetti. She loves spaghetti. And I am not a spaghetti person. And it's the the can and the noodles. And it's nothing special to it. And I'm like, it's just some sauce and noodles. And I absolutely despise it. Tori, I'm sorry. I hope you already knew that, but <laughs> that's, that's one of those that I'll eat cereal that night instead of eating it. Is this like, is she going to like, is this opening up a can? Not, not, the, not the so sauce, but like the marinara is- sauce that comes in a can and then noodles. And I'm like, man, I understand not, that. it doesn't do a whole lot for me. You know, I I'm out there on the smoker and I, I'm like trying to make a great meal. But um, so I guess I'll go next. Number one, what is the worst mistake you've ever made on air? <laughs> and we'll go with uh, the relish for this one. What? You're starting me off on relish? Yeah, that's easy. Relish. Well, I mean, in moderation, it's easy. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, I, I, I cannot say it. You can't say I it. I cannot say it. You can't repeat it. I can't. Like, even on the internet, I can't repeat it. Nobody ever, like, if anybody ever heard me say this, you'd be done. Nobody ever called me out on it. Really? Yeah. Like, did you lose sleep over it? Uh, no, because I didn't get a tweet, an email, a text. You were checking, though, weren't you? Every, like, and I said it on radio, and I, like, look to my left, and Riz is, like, voice texting somebody. Yeah. And I look to my right, and Kremen's, like, on, like, barbecueusa.com. And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, all right, let's just start talking as fast as I can. So there you go. You got me, man. Relish. Oh, oh, man, this is the worst. What are you doing to me, man? You got something to chase it with. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, 
<laughs> that's terrible. How did, dare you start me on relish? Oh, all right. I'm up. Oh, that is awful. If you could strike out any current big leaguer, who would it be? You can answer it. Or, oh, golly, that is awful. Um, or you're going to, you know what? You're going to have to eat some relish. All right. Take that. If I can strike out any current big leaguer. Yeah. Hmm. These questions are like, I, I mean, how already I can tell my questions are harder than That's yours. pretty easy, huh? Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, if I could strike out any, I got to go with Mike Trout. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's kind of a, I mean, that's the bar. Right? Love you, Mike Trout, but yeah. I want to strike you out. Come and get it. It's, it's pretty hard to do. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, man, that's, that's a pretty easy one. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, can we, we're going to, I'm talking to some people once we hang up, <laughs> they, by the way. They set me up good. Which Mariners broadcaster would you least want to share a hotel room with? <laughs> um, well, definitely Gary. 100% Gary Hill. Hey, Gary, I mean, like I've seen, like he and I will like meet down a lobby and I'll walk past his room and knock and like, and, and like the door is open and I look in there and it's just like, what tornado went off in your room, man? <laughs> like you are an adult and a father. Just keep it tidy or at least like brush it back from the doorway so we can't see. Up sleep. everywhere. It's embarrassing, man. It's like there bananas everywhere. It's terrible. <laughs> it's a joke, man. It's, it's bad news. For sure, Gary Hill Jr. At Gary Hill Jr. People let him know. <laughs> All right. Your last question. I, I, now, this is a good question. Kendall, what is your honest opinion of the Oakland Coliseum, your former team? And if you don't want to answer this, then you got to hammer down a, you got to go mayo on me. I mean, you got people who love you there, man. People love you at the Coliseum. You know, the ushers, you know, the vendors, the clubbies. I'm going to have to hammer down some minutes. <laughs> Uh, there it is i see it's all worth it oh this is like this is like my worst nightmare <laughs> this is like my palms are sweating i'm gonna go ahead and open up my water bottle before we get this going yeah I, I i saved i saved the mayo for this particular reason yeah i got the mayo for your next question too <laughs> mm. there it is to squeeze squeeze that in all the way all the way the whole pack <laughs> So I'm talking about how that's that awful, tangy, mm, and rich, luscious. I just got over the stomach bug like two days ago. Lost to it ten pounds in two days, and I about just did it again. That was Aaron. That was awful. <laughs> I've never done that. Oh, number three. God, which of your kids are you least proud of? <laughs> <laughs> For the mayo. <laughs> uh, well, see, the great thing is that, like, they're all they're all too young to yeah. even know what I'm doing right this now. This will save on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, my oldest is six. I got six. I got six. That's a great question. Six, four, and one. I mean, like, I could say the one year old because, like, he really won't know. But that's yeah, mean. Right? That's mean, man, to say it you're not proud of a one year old. Uh, that. But that is really mean. <laughs> Like, I thought this would be easy just to throw one of my kids under the bus, but, I mean, you're a dad, man. Hey, like, that's... Just wait till they're 10 or 12, and they look up Daddy's interview with Kendall, and they have to... <laughs> like, wow, Dad's not proud of me? <laughs> they try to you know, that's that a great one. point. Like, they this is going to live forever. They can't, they, when they can't understand it. This is going to live forever. Yeah, you might as well just hammer down. You're the worst, man. Go ahead. <laughs> it's awful. It's bad, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's so terrible <laughs> chase it <laughs> did you get all of it did you get oh, all of it oh god <laughs> <laughs> that's bad oh and i like i actually like bad aids but in different like quantities that. all right <laughs> um we have time for some fan questions to kind of Please. take the burden off here. We got time for a couple. 
Oh, um, all right, Sarah. Sarah, let's uh, pivot here. Sarah, what's your favorite? Okay, other than spaghetti, what's your uh, favorite food to eat in Alabama, Kendall? Whew. Like favorite food I I like to eat in Alabama. Man, barbecue, just yeah. the barbecue here in Alabama. We have several different spots. One of my favorite spots in Birmingham is called Rodney Scott's and found it a couple of years ago. It's one of those places you just walk in and you know it's going to be good. Uh, you just smell the smell that's in there. And um, they got a big mop that they're brushing all their, their barbecue sauce with. And it's just such a good spot. So I would say when I'm back home, one thing I, I miss when I'm out out west is 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 barbecue so that's something i do eat a lot when i'm here it's a wise move my friend yeah it's a very wise move all right uh let's let's try to get to a couple more of these <clears throat> before we wrap it up other fan questions big ben wants to know hey appreciate your great attitude how do you practice oh i like this how do you practice staying positive you're clearly a very positive person kendall yeah it's uh for me it doesn't come naturally. I don't think to, to any of us, I think our flesh desires arguing and grumbling and negativity. Um, so for me, my faith teaches, uh, I believe that my faith teaches that my daily, um, relationship with Christ is something that I really, I practice daily. And even this morning and, um, before we got on this call, just my hope and prayer is that I come off in a Christ-like manner. And to me, that's, honestly the answer that i would give anyone so um it's it's tough don't get me wrong when you're going bad and you're not pitching well and the, your kid is not behaving and you come into the field and you're bringing a lot of stuff to the field you know um it's tough but there's a decision that has to be made daily and that's one way i practice it was just um worship in the morning and quiet time and it's been one of those things that's, that's changed my life. And, and honestly, Tommy John surgery changed my life. It slowed everything down. It, uh, because if you would have known the Kendall Graveman before um, the relationship with Christ, it's, it's different. And I, I didn't want to be the person that I was becoming. And, and now to slow down and have the game taken away for a, a short period of time, it's different on the back end. And I'm, I'm super thankful that, that people notice, but it's not me. It's, it's um, what's going on inside of my life. I mean, it's taking you a long way. That's for sure. And, yeah. and, and you got plenty more in this game as well. All right. We got one, one more time for one more question from Carrie Lee. All right. Do you root, oh, root for Auburn or Alabama, Kendall? This is easy answer. Easy, easy answer roll, for you. Roll Tide. And they got a game tonight, basketball game, I believe, uh, tonight. So, they're playing well, man. They're undefeated in the SEC. So I went to Mississippi State. So I got four years of, of allegiance over there, uh, another school in the SEC. But um, growing up, we had season tickets to the Alabama football games. And it was something that our family did. My brother and I always looked forward to going to games in Tuscaloosa. And honestly, wish I would have played at the time in high school for Alabama. That's all all I wanted to do professional career was not even thought about, but playing for the Crimson Tide was something that uh, I always wanted to do. And uh, Auburn, I really hope, how can I say this in the nicest way possible? I really hope they lose every game. they play. <laughs> and <laughs> that's, that's the way it is here in Alabama. So now, now what about your wife, man? She's an Auburn fan. She's from Auburn. Yeah. We forgive her though. Man, so this marriage is like a this yeah. marriage is a, it's a miracle. It's good that she doesn't really care about watching the sports games as much as I do. So we let her slide a little bit. All right. Fair enough. Well, I clearly uh if it's not the spaghetti, it's her choice of sports slide. games. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, uh hey, we are so appreciative of our three fan questions for Kendall and for everybody being on the program with us here today, take it to the grave in our QA. Uh, we want to give away a Kendall Graveman autographed baseball to someone who was with us today. And Carrie Lee Campbell is our prize winner. Carrie Lee, congratulations. You'll be taking home the Kendall Graveman autographed baseball. And a Mariners representative will be reaching out to you very soon to help uh, coordinate some details for you there. 
Well, that just about does it for our time today with Kendall. Uh, he no doubt has a, a family dinner to get to here pretty soon. Uh, but oh, we have more coming up on the Mariners virtual baseball bash today. Hey, I'm sure that uh, sneakers will be talked about from 4 to 4.30 on Justin Dunn's TikTok takeover. 7 to 9 tonight, Gary Hill and Rick Riz will be on the Hot Stove Report on 710 ESPN. And then we'll be back with Kendall. Can't wait for this on Friday from 4 to 5. we got the happy hour edition of the Inside Corner. Uh, Marco Gonzalez, myself, and Kendall. I I'm pumped. We, we had so much fun doing that show during the quarantine months and uh, Marco was the, the perfect co-host for it. And uh, we're excited to have Kendall join the program and, and dig a little, little bit deeper even into Kendall's background and everything that we're excited for for 2021 and beyond. So uh, Kendall, man, this was this was a unique experience for both of us. I had a lot of fun. If don't have mayonnaise Friday, I'll be there. So if you <laughs> promise me no mayonnaise, I'm in. No Look mayonnaise. Good. No relish, no nothing. Uh, just three dudes talking baseball, man. It's awesome. been great hanging out with you a little bit, Kendall. Uh, all the best to, to you and your family, and we uh, look forward to seeing you in Peoria sometime very soon. Appreciate y'all. That is Kendall Graveman. I'm Aaron Goldsmith. We're so glad you could join us for another virtual clubhouse chat. Remember, mariners.com slash baseball bash, where you'll get the full schedule of the rena remaining days of the Mariners virtual baseball bash that goes through Saturday. So we'll talk to you again on Friday with Kendall Graveman on the Inside Corner Live. Enjoy Justin Dunn's TikTok takeover coming up shortly. Have a great day. Thank you for watching today's virtual clubhouse chat. For more information on more great events coming up, visit mariners.com slash baseball bash.